Welcome back to another episode of Beauty and the Bolt. Today we're gonna to be learning how to use the desktop shopbot, which is like the big shopbot alpha's way cuter little sister. Shopbots are CNC machines, which is computer numerical control. And it basically means that it will carve and cut and move to the way that you specify in the program. In case of this little Shopbot desktop and its big sister, the Shopbot PRS Alpha, the computer control is controlling the speed of the bit, how fast it's spinning, where it's going, etc. In fact, all of the printer-like devices, like 3D printers, laser cutters, are all some kind of CNC. Today we're gonna be using a scrap piece of wood that we found, and this is just a test piece and a demo. You can use any kind of wood, plastic, foam, etc. Um, you'll just have to secure it down. If you don't know if you can use something in a Shopbot, ask the Envisioneering Center director for help. If you're wondering why you would use a Shopbot over a laser cutter, there's a variety of reasons. A big one is that Shopbots can cut pockets and not just etch, so that means that you could cut a half inch deep pocket rather than having to cut all the way through the material or just etch a pattern on the outside. On a Shopbot, you can even cut away things at an angle using a function called V-Carve, and this adds a lot of depth. So you could create a topographical map on a Shopbot, but you definitely couldn't do that on a laser cutter. Not at least without a lot of difficulty. Since CNC machines run off a list of commands, we have to use a piece of software to create those commands. So we're gonna start over on the computer using a software called vCarve to do that. On the left, go ahead and type in the dimensions you measured earlier. You'll also wanna set the Z0 position to material surface. This will make things like vCarving a lot easier. Click OK and you're ready to get designing. Use the tools on the left to design whatever you want into your part. These will be the outlines that will determine where your tool moves to later on. You can even import images if you wanna get fancy. Check the written tutorial if you wanna to learn to do that. Once you're happy with your design, go over and click on Tool Pass at the right of your screen. And then to make it stick around, we're gonna click this little thumbnail. There we go. You can look through the different toolpath options there are. The most common one for text is vCarve, but you're of course welcome to choose whatever you'd like. You can preview what each of these effects do on the computer. So once you get to know how to make a toolpath, go ahead and play around to find what you like. As an example, we're gonna set up a vCarve to etch out my name. So we're gonna select my name in the design we made and then click vCarve under toolpaths. A new pane will come up that has settings for depth, direction of cut, and tooling. Make sure the vCarve bit is selected under tools. Set your depth of whatever, however deep you'd like it to go. So in this case, I'm gonna go quarter inch. Once I'm happy with that, I'm gonna go and click calculate. Once you're happy, click okay at the bottom of the pane and toolpath will be opened in the 3D preview window. You can even hit play and see what your design is going to look like. Now that we have the V-Carve set up, let's make those shapes we designed into pockets. We'll go back into 2D view, close the toolpath preview plane, select all the shapes, and click the pocket tool under toolpaths. Go ahead and set the pocket depth, make sure you aren't cutting all the way through your material unless you want to, and choose an end mill under the tooling menu. For this, we'll use an eighth ball nose end mill, but ask the Envisioneering Center director if you have any questions. Hit OK at the bottom of the pane, and you can now preview this toolpath as well. If you're happy with how everything looks, go ahead and click on the Export Toolpaths button on the bottom right side of the toolpath window and save your tooling somewhere easy to find. This will be the file you open on the Shopbot. You might have noticed that we changed tools from the V-Carve to the ball nose end mill. This means that in the middle of our job, we will have to change our milling tip. The software will remind you as well. Now that our toolpath is fully generated, let's head over to the Shopbot to set up our piece. The first thing we need to do is secure this down to the spoil board. There's a couple ways to do this, but honestly, nails and screws are the easiest way. It's called a spoil board for a reason. It will need to be replaced. You shouldn't feel too bad about putting some small holes in it. I'm gonna nail this down in each of the corners, and the only reason I can do this is because my design never reaches the corners. Make sure that wherever you're nailing it down will not interfere with the toolpath. I've left a little bit of room at the top of each nail to make removing them at the end easier. The first tool we set up in our tool pass is the V-Carve, so let's go ahead and put the V-Carve bit in. Now that we're inside the machine, better grab your PPE. Using a wrench, grab the top and lo gently loosen the collet nut, which is the part that holds your bit into place. Carefully grab your bit. I'd recommend using a rag so that you can hold the bottom of it. Place it into the collet and tighten down the collet nut. Leave a little bit of space for the grounding pin later. Now that's finger tight, go ahead and grab the collet nut wrench and twist the two wrenches against each other. Once they're as tight as you can get them, it should be good to go. At this point, you should run the warm-up routine. Once the warm-up is done, make sure the spindle interlock is off again before you reach into the machine. The last step before running your job is setting the zeros for the workpiece. In the Shopback control software, hit the XY homing button. Oh. 
The last step before running your job is zeroing the z-axis, which is the up and down. To do this, you're going to first plug in the connector on the z-zeroing setup, which is over here. Next, you want to clip the clip to the bit. What this is doing is essentially creating a full circuit so that when this makes contact, the machine knows. Test to make sure it's working by tapping the plate against the bit and checking the software to make sure that the one flashes on and off. Put the plate under the bit and over your workpiece. It will tell you to hit enter when the bit is above the plate and you're ready to zero. Double check one more time and then hit enter. The software will confirm that it's zeroed and remind you to put away the alligator clip and the plate. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. Manually jog the machine's z-axis so that you have enough clearance to put on the dust collector shroud. And then clip it on. It'll stick with magnets. Alright, now we're ready to run our piece, so let's close up these doors and get going. When you're ready to run your job, click on the cut part button. It will bring up a menu asking you to select your toolpath and pick the one that we made earlier in vCarve. Confirm that the correct tool is in the spindle. The z-axis is zeroed. It'll open up a last window that tells you it's about to start the spindle, and this is a good time to check to make sure that interlock is now on, and hit start. And now the last thing is to turn on the dust collector vacuum that's located under the machine. Click OK, and your part will start running. It's going to ask if tool number two is in the spindle. Since it's not, I'm going to say no. Do I want to use the keypad to move the height? And I'm going to say yes. I'm going to jog it up. Before opening the machine, I'm going to turn off the spindle interlock. Now I'm going to open up the doors and change the tool. Once it reads zero, it'll remind you that the safety interlock is still open. Go ahead and close the doors and turn it on. Anytime the tool is running, you should be watching for any possible errors or safety concerns and be ready to hit the emergency stop button. Now that the tool is finished moving, we're going to turn off the safety interlock, turn off the vacuum, and open up the menu to jog the spindle back up, as well as back. Once it's sufficiently out of the way, it's time to tear down. Carefully remove the nails without hitting anything in the machine, and grab your piece. So here's my finished part. As you can see, I went a little bit too deep with the V-carb bit, but that's the beauty of the ShopBot is I can always try again and get it right the next time. Please keep in mind this is a machine shop tool and it can be dangerous to yourself or others, so don't be afraid to ask for help if you need it. Thanks for watching and if you want to see more of the videos that Andrew and I create, be sure to check us out on YouTube at Beauty and the Bolt. I feel like you made it through the whole episode of Beauty and the Bolt. That means you should probably give us a like and subscribe because you made it this far, why not? While you're at it, maybe even consider purchasing some of the products down in the description below. There's also the source files for the project, of course, and our merchandise store, which is really fun, so you should check it out. Signing off, this is Zyla and Andrew behind the camera from Beauty and the Bowl.